Messiah and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. The gospel of our Lord. Thank you, God. Invite you to be seated. Well, today is All Saints Sunday, and with All Saints Sunday, we remember uh, those saints who have gone before us and those who are with us, because there are both. You are saints if you are in Christ. You have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, as we heard in Revelations, and we are one a new creation together in God's love in Jesus. So... How you feel being a saint? <laughs> Kids, how do you feel being saints? <laughs> Parents, how do you feel your children being saints? Is there work to be done? <laughs> you bet. We know that's true in all of us, don't we? Well, we come to this time, um, and in my life as a pastor, I have to tell you that uh, I uh, it's not the, the thing I, I have in my best um, things I've done in my ministry that I that I think I do well, and that is being with people as they are dying. It is one of those things that breaks your heart, and I get tears in my eyes, and I blubber, <laughs> and I try coming up with the right words, and I'm just thankful that God uses whatever it is that we share. Um, to make a difference to comfort people in that time. So, that being said, I have to go to a place that I find greater strength, and that is uh, within the scriptures themselves, which would be only appropriate, right? That's what we should do. So, we go to the scriptures, and if I were to go to any place, I would go to John's Gospel, the 11th chapter. You know this by heart, without a doubt, right? It's that lovely story of uh, Mary and Martha. And we kind of don't like it as well because uh, we find ourselves usually being more of a Martha than a Mary. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you remember the story, uh, oh, just a little background. Um, Bethany is where Mary, uh, Martha, and Lazarus lived. And, and, and Bethany is only like two miles away from Jerusalem. So when Jesus went to Jerusalem to teach and to do all the things that Jesus did, he would then go two miles, walk two miles outside of town, kind of a suburb, if you will, uh, and you uh, go out there and you stay with friends. And so he stayed at Mary and Martha and Lazarus' home. And if you remember the beginning of that story, it's right up at the, at the very front. Jesus was there, and uh, they were gathered in the living room. If you can imagine a living room, right? Uh, couches and easy chairs and people gathered around, and maybe a bit of a crowd even as they were together. And uh, Jesus is teaching. He's talking to them about what God is now doing with him being there. And as he's teaching, you got Mary sitting at his feet. Isn't that a beautiful picture? you got Mary sitting at his feet. Can you just picture that? Now, if you back the camera up just a bit, okay? Now, you're backing the camera up, and Jesus is proud of Mary. And as you get back just a little bit further, you're standing in the kitchen door. And if you turn to your right, right at the stove, there's Martha. You know Martha, right? You all met a Martha or two, and you're like, maybe you're a Martha, right? Martha's doing everything. 
she's cooking, she's, she's preparing the table, she's getting everything ready. And as she looks through the doorway in at Jesus teaching in this beautiful moment, Mary's there and she's not helping. How do you feel as a Martha? Are you excited about that? Oh, good, Mary. I'm glad she's getting to talk to Jesus. Yeah. No. <laughs> we know Martha because we're Martha in a lot of respects. We're going, why doesn't Mary get in here? My sister should be helping me prepare this meal. Got all this work to do, and I've been working for three days straight getting ready for Jesus to come, and the food's not ready yet, the table's not set yet. There's all this to do, and Mary should be in here helping. And what do you do if you're Martha? You make noise, right? <laughs> Who hasn't slammed a cabinet to make sure that somebody knows that they're upset? <sighs> Mary should be in here. Pow, 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 on the pot, pound the lid down, stare. Oh, sorry, Mandy. <laughs> meant that to go to the top. Yeah. Finally, you re reach a breaking point. And that breaking point comes and Martha storms out of the kitchen then and goes into Jesus. And this is a big thing, you know, for uh, Martha to do. She goes right up to Jesus. She said, Lord, tell Mary to get in the kitchen and help me. That's pretty brave. Interrupt like that? The Lord himself is teaching? Martha doesn't care. Put her in her place. Make her do what she should do. Jesus turns to Martha and simply says, Martha, Martha, she's doing the one thing that is needful right now, to be there, to listen, the one thing that is most needful. You suppose Martha learned that lesson? How are you at learning that lesson? It's the same deal, right? Well, listen, the story goes on from that point, and Lazarus has been sick. We don't know if he's been sick for a long time or not, but Lazarus, Lazarus dies. Mary and Martha's hearts are broken. Jesus is away. They sent word to Jesus, but Jesus doesn't come. And for some reason, Martha hears that Jesus is on his way finally to come. Too late, but he comes. And when that happens, then, does Martha stay at home waiting for Jesus to come? No. You know Martha. Martha runs, it says, out to meet him on the road. And I just want you to picture this because too often we put into the scriptures the, the warm sweetness of a moment, you know. Uh, whenever you hear the scriptures read on CD or, what's a CD anyway? That's, well, that's a disc thing. You put it on there. Um, but whenever we do that, we think of light music being played in the background. Martha coming up to Jesus to hear Jesus. I don't think it was that way at all. Martha ran out to meet Jesus because he was late. He didn't get there on time. And so Martha comes out toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lord himself and stands there looking right in the face, face to face, eyeball to eyeball. And he's looking and he said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha is being all that Martha as a human being could be, just like we would as well. And she challenges the Lord. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many of us have been there, right? At that moment in our own lives. We've stood in emergency rooms with accidents that have happened and tragedies that surrounded. And we've stood there and we've wondered in the back of our minds, or we've been so brave as Martha was to say it out loud, and we have said, Lord, why did this happen? You could have helped us in that. Or we've sat next to the hospital bed, and we've had the doctor standing there, and in their own kind of doctor way, they've explained why this is a terrible situation, and why this end is not going to be good for our loved one. And as we've stood there and listened, right, we've asked the question, Lord, if you had been here, they would not have died. Or we've sat next to the bed and long waited, holding the hand in hospice care, wondering what's that. And as we feel the last breath go from our loved one, we, we ask that, Lord, why 
would you be here? Why didn't you come on time? Why weren't my prayers answered? And in that moment, our hearts are wrenched from within us. The despair that overcomes us and the hopelessness that we feel takes hold of us and there is darkness all the way around. Those are horrible times. As we read the scripture from John, the 11th chapter, we hear that all the Jewish friends, all their family and friends came to comfort them and said, we know how hard that is, don't we? We come and we say, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, I wish this had not had to happen. We bumble over words that we wish were right, and we try to give some comfort in a moment that there appears to be none, and we feel helpless to help our friends or loved ones or family feel that hope at all. We despair with them, side by side. <coughs> but you see, that wasn't all that took place there. Because after she asked Jesus this, face to face with the Lord, right, eyeball to eyeball, he says to her, you know that he will rise again, this Lazarus, your brother. And she says, you know, like we all would, yeah, Lord, I didn't have a confirmation. <laughs> with me? Yeah. We say it every week in the Apostles' Creed. We know that it's true in that we know it. But in those moments, it's hard for us to believe. He says, you know that he'll be raised from the dead. And she says, yes, Lord, I know that. And you have to picture Jesus' face. Because I have to believe that at that moment there was this sadness that came over him. As he looked into Martha, and there was still not that hope yet. And in his words now, he gives it to her by saying, Martha, I am the resurrection. I, Martha, am the resurrection. And anyone who believes in me, though they're dead, yet shall they live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Isn't that the word of promise and hope? And Martha still is hanging on the edge of despair because she isn't quite there yet. And Jesus knows that. He just touches her one bit further and says, Martha, do you believe that? Do you believe that? She says, I believe that you are the Son of God, the Messiah who has come. I believe that you bring us eternal life in you. And in that confession, now she has something that Jesus gave her, and that is life and life everlasting, and hope in a, in a death that will not have an end. It's life that will not have an end. And that beautiful time that Jesus turns to Martha, instead of being face to face and confrontational with why not, Jesus gave her the answer for why. And they walk side by side and they come back and they meet Mary and they go through the same thing again. And in that, it says the same thing and she comes to understand too. And then they go to all the friends and as they go, they go to the graveside. And you know what happens, right? Lazarus has been dead three whole days. And Jesus says, roll that stone away. Roll the stone away. Are you, Lord, this is not your best idea. He rolls the stone away, and in his voice, he yells out, Lazarus, arise, come up. And in the word, the word made flesh, Jesus, he does which we know now in our lives and in our hearts that we have this promise that Jesus truly is the resurrection and the life. You see, we struggle with believing, my friends, all the time. We struggle at the edge of despair and we are not exactly sure where the hope lies except for in meeting Jesus on the road and then hearing that good news time and time again. That the cross that Jesus went to now is empty. And the tomb that he was taken to is empty. And that Jesus is truly alive as he walks in and amongst us now. Right now. In our loved ones and in us and in our friends. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the promise of eternal life to come. 
for which we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to do something a little different today.